And so with that, now I'm going to jump into a Platform 9 demo. Right? I'm hoping this will give you a much more in-depth perspective into the product that we're building. And I have three demos for you today. The first one is a Platform 9 demo with a KVM environment. And I want to use that demo to give you a perspective into the initial setup process. Right? I want you to see just how simple and easy we make it for you to go from just a bunch of servers to a Platform 9 deployment. Okay, the second video, or the second demo I have is actually a live environment. Uh, we're gonna jump into a live Platform 9 account, and I'm gonna use that session to get into a deep dive of various functions or features we support, and the different use cases we address, and what are some of our key differentiators. And then finally, we are gonna get into a recorded demo, in which this is a preview, a tech preview of our VMware support functionality. Okay, so let's get started. And with the VMware support demo, I want to get across two points, right? I want you to see, first of all, just how simple and easy we make it to layer Platform 9 managed OpenStack on top of your existing vSphere infrastructure, right? And then um, I want you to see this single pane of glass interface that we're building that lets you pull together your KVM servers or resources side by side with your VMware vSphere resources and then manage all that infrastructure as a single pool of capacity under a single consistent interface. Okay, so let's, with that, let's get started with the demo. So the first demo video is for Platform 9 support of KVM hypervisors. Um, and what we see here is a Platform 9 demo account, and it's been set up with about seven KVM hypervisors or so. We're logged in as administrator. We're logged into the infrastructure dashboard view, and we're logged into one of our default tenants it's called the service tenant. And what you're seeing here is that this infrastructure dashboard view is designed to give you as an administrator a bird's eye view into all the capacity that you have, what servers do you have, what storage uh, they're associated with, what networking they're associated with, right? And to give you a perspective into what is the total capacity you have, how much of it is currently being utilized, how much free capacity do you have, what is your over allocation status currently? So attributes like that. And then in a second, we'll get into the details of how to pair your existing or new infrastructure with Platform 9. Right, so as we click on that add host button, we're gonna get into a dialog, which is gonna guide us through the steps of adding your servers or your infrastructure to Platform 9. Right, and this is a very simple process. It's a matter of following three simple steps. The first step is to download the agent software. Right, now we support all the popular Linux distributions. So we support CentOS, Red Hat, Ubuntu. And so we just downloaded an RPM package because I have a CentOS server in my lab environment. And so we're gonna copy over this RPM package um, on that lab server. And so this, uh, you know, the agent is about three megabytes or so in size, it's really lightweight. It's also stamped with your security credentials, right? So these are security credentials specific to your Platform 9 environment. And so what we're doing now is we copied over the agent to that server and we are now gonna invoke the installation of that agent, right? And once we do that, the agent starts doing a couple of things, right? It starts gathering information about your environment. It starts looking at what packages are installed, you know, what dependencies does it need to pull in, et cetera. And so as this installation finishes, notice something interesting happened on the dashboard, right? You'll notice that an additional alert popped up on the dashboard. And what it's showing you is telling you, congratulations, you have a brand new server that's awaiting authorization from you, right? So this was the server that we just deployed that agent on. And so now it's calling back home and it's awaiting for your authorization. And we just authorized that server now, right? And now that we authorized that server, it's now waiting in the discovery mode. Can you automate the discovery of servers like that? So um, you can through the APIs, and everything you see through the user interface is available through our REST APIs. We typically do see, though, that customers do this as a one-time process, and they tend to use the user interface for it, but you can. Okay. And so I want to highlight a couple of things that happen here, right? Um, as the agent got dropped on that server, um, it is prepared to deal with uh, either greenfield or brownfield environments, 
right? So this is one of our key differentiators, which is we do not expect that you use platform nine with brand new green fuel environments only. If you, you know, if you have racked and stack a bunch of, you know, brand new Linux servers, that's completely fine. We work with that environment, and we will actually pull in the right KVM packages or you know the libword packages, etc., and deploy it on that server. But if you do have existing infrastructure, if you have a bunch of Linux servers and you're running a bunch of workloads on them already, which some of our beta customers do have environments like that, then we're designed to work with those environments. So we seamlessly layer ourselves on top, and the moment you drop in that platform nine agent on that server we will discover any existing workloads that are running on that server. And they'll start showing up in your platform nine cloud. And you don't have to do anything special. You don't have to turn off those workloads or take that server in maintenance mode or nothing special, right? So they all just kind of seamlessly start being reported in your platform nine cloud. So how are the credentials stored at each end and kept secure? So are you talking about the credentials for the, yeah, the initial authentication where you go by and it goes through and validates and interrogates your environment? What's to stop anyone else from using said credentials to do whatever else they may want to do? So how is it actually protected? Right. So when we deploy a platform and account for you, uh, we deploy it with a set of PKI keys, a set of certs, right? And they're only available between the cloud-based controller and that agent. So the agent is stamped with those credentials. Okay. And then the agent then uses those to communicate to the controller over HTTPS, right? So that's our way to protect that. So, yes. Uh, when you said the agent gets dropped on the ho the physical host, mm -hmm. and then it starts discovering all these services underneath. So you're interacting with like the sender driver with Neutron, and you say that that'll work on it like a mature OpenStack that's maybe the last like Juno or the older versions too. So, so we are providing the OpenStack, right? So you supply physical infrastructure. Uh, and that need not have OpenStack on it because we are giving you OpenStack. Mm -hmm. So all we need from you as an end user is a bunch of Linux servers with the favorite operating system of your choice. So you could deploy you know, Ubuntu on them or CentOS or RHEL. And then we determine, you know, we are at a certain version of OpenStack right now and we upgrade you know, to the most recent versions as and when the upgrades are available. So the agent fetches the appropriate software Exactly. From you to, and That's installs right. it on itself. Yep. Okay. So the agent acts as a bootstrap entity, and then it looks at what you have on the server and it will pull in the appropriate OpenStack drivers and things like that. Okay, I, I was asking particularly like the non greenfield deployment. The non greenfield deployments? Right. Correct. So when I said brownfield, what, I ex what we expect from our end users is that they have a bunch of KVM servers. Yeah, and you know they have some workloads running on them. If they have OpenStack, you know that's you know we'll ignore it because we will be deploying uh, OpenStack components, etc., on that environment. Okay. And so you know going back to kind of the couple of points that we were talking about, um, Platform Nine is designed to discover your existing workloads, and this is not just a one-time thing, right? On an ongoing basis we always treat the hypervisor as the source of truth. Right? We don't think the source of truth is us or any other management layer. It's always hypervisor. And the benefit of this model to you is that you are free to do any operations on your underlying hypervisor by directly going to that hypervisor layer. Right? And we think this happens pretty commonly. This happens in vCenter environments as well, where end users have to go directly to vCenter and move or migrate some VMs or do several things that we're not just going to give them access to through our portal. So when you do that, Platform 9 will discover those moves or those changes, and it will adapt to it. Okay? So, so this video was designed to give you, you know, perspective into that initial setup process, right? And um, you know, the the overall setup is extremely simple. All you need to do is get started with your account. You know, download that agent, pop it on each of your servers in case of Linux. Um, and I want to highlight that this is the only software component that you will ever have to install with Platform Nine, right? Because the model, the way our model works, is that from this point onwards. We use that agent as our liaison between our controller and your infrastructure, and then across our updates or patches or upgrades, we completely automate that process. So you don't need to worry about upgrading the agent or anything like that, right? We take care of all of that. 